What's up you guys? My name's Cody and today I'm gonna show you how to get your music on Spotify. This is something I think a lot of younger musicians struggle with. They think that they need some help or a record label to get their music out there. And it's really something you can do on your own. Uh, it only takes about 10 minutes and it's super, super cheap to do. Once you've done it, your music will be on Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, Pandora, Google Play, everywhere that you can find music. So this is something that's super beneficial and I think every single band or artist should do. Now we all know that streaming has taken over the world. Nobody buys CDs or cassettes or records. Well, some people do buy records, but that's not the main way that they get music. The main way they get music is they go onto Apple Music or Spotify and they listen to their playlists and they find your music. So it is super important that you have your music out there and I'm gonna show you how to do it in just a few steps. So step number one, grab a fresh coffee because coffee's great and it's gonna help you. So let's get into it. All right, so the first thing you're gonna have to do is sign up with a music distributor. Now there's three that kind of lead the market, one of them being TuneCore, another one being CD Baby, and the third one being DistroKid. Personally, I like DistroKid the most. They only charge you $20 a year for unlimited songs, um, whereas the other ones are a per album. I've always used DistroKid, I find it great, so I'm gonna focus on that one for this. Now I do have a referral link for DistroKid down below. Um, be sure to use that and it will save you a couple dollars when you sign up. Now signing up for DistroKid is super easy. Uh, go ahead, enter your email and your chosen password, and then click sign up. Now there are different options for DistroKid, the basic musician, the musician plus, or a label. So basically, the only difference between them is how many bands or artist names you can upload at once. Now for the most basic one, it's just one artist, one band name, which I think will do for most people, and it's only $20 a year, so let's go ahead and do that one. Now you are gonna need a credit card for this to work, but there are no hidden fees after this. It is simply the $20 a year, and after that, you're good to go. This is your dashboard where you can see all your music, all your albums, and everything that's going on, which stores they're being sent to. And the great thing about DistroKid is if you do work with a team where someone takes a percentage, maybe you're a, a band of four people and you wanna split out all that money evenly, you can have it distributed so that everybody gets a certain portion of the money. Now, to upload a song, it's very simple. Click the upload button. First thing you're gonna see is a list of stores. I always select all of them. Why not have your music on all stores? Now there are marketing strategies where you might want to drive all of your traffic to one platform. If you're trying to push your following on Spotify, you might only want to have your music on Spotify. Personally, I don't see the harm in having it everywhere, so I always select all the stores. We're gonna select on the number of songs we're gonna upload, whether it's just a single or we're doing a five track EP or a 10 track album. Let's keep it simple and do one song for now. Has it been previously released or is this the first time you're sharing this music with the world on these platforms? This one's super easy, just throw in your band name. Um, let's say you are my first band. Now if you haven't uploaded to Apple Music or Spotify before, you'll wanna select I am a different of your band name and they'll create a new artist page for you, which is great, they do all the work. All right, next thing you're gonna have to do is select your release date. Now it is important when you're uploading your music that you kind of have a plan and you're not just throwing it out there into the world especially when it comes to Spotify and their playlisting algorithms, they require at least a one week minimum. Um, I normally suggest three weeks just to be safe. So you'd wanna go out here and select something well into the future, let's say maybe even next month as it is March right now. Now you can select your time. I don't really care about the time. Let's say it always just goes out at midnight. Um, some people do midnight in Eastern time, so in New York. Uh, some people do midnight in the lister, listener's time zone. Uh, that's up to your own preference. All right, next is pre-order. I always select yes for pre-order. The reason being is you're gonna want people to know that your music is coming out. This will let them buy it before it comes out or pre-save it on Spotify before it comes out. And this really helps drive people towards your song and engage listeners. Now, I normally select a pre-order start date that's just a few days from when I'm uploading. Generally, it only takes about five or six days for your music to get onto Spotify or Apple Music. And you want people to be able to get it right away. So select one that's maybe within the week or just at the beginning of next week. All right, next up is your record label. Um, now you don't need a record label. You don't actually have to put anything in here, um, but I like to just for fun. Our band's called My First Band, so let's go ahead and put My First Band in there, and then that will show up as copyrighted to My First Band on Spotify. All right, next up is the album cover. Now, hopefully you already have this designed, um, but it is important that it's exported in the right format and is the right size. Um, so all you do is click on it here, and it will upload your album artwork right there. Next up is language. Now, a lot of people don't think this is important, but it is very important that you specify what language your music is in because that's the audience that it's gonna get shown to. After that, we have genre. Now, there are two because genre can be hard to define sometimes. Um, and this is one I always struggle with. 
Nobody really knows what their music sounds like. They may have an idea of what it sounds like, um, but what I suggest is share your music with your family or your friends or someone who listens to that style of music and ask them. You may think you have a punk record, they may think you have a metal record, and someone else might say you have a rock record. So take a survey, find out what everybody says, and select that. Um, now this is really important when it comes to playlisting again on Spotify. Uh, they do try to put your music with music that is similar to it. So if you say you have reggae music, but you actually have a folk record, it's not gonna do well. Nobody's gonna listen to it because it's gonna be delivered to the wrong audience. So let's say we think we have a rock record, but uh, it has some pop elements to it maybe, so we'll call it rock pop. All right, next up we have our song title. Um, we are just doing a single for this one. Now they are very particular with your titles. Uh, every single word has to be capitalized, just like titles are. Uh, you don't want any years in there. All the rules are listed below on exactly how to do it. It is pretty self-explanatory, um, but your song will get rejected if you don't do it right. So let's go my first song. Great, my first song by my first band, <laughs> fantastic. After that, we're gonna upload our audio file. Now they do accept a lot of different file types. However, I always recommend uploading a WAV file. That is the highest quality audio you can and it's gonna help it stand out from the rest on there. Now, if you have uploaded before, you may have an ISRC code. This is basically just a group of numbers that will help identify your song. Think of it like a barcode. All right, next is the songwriter credit. If you wrote this song, be sure to say that you did so that you get all of it. If it is a cover, that is all right. You can still upload it. Um, and the great thing is DistroKid will take care of all the licensing for you. You don't have to worry about sending royalties to people. They're really great for that. Now we're gonna go ahead and put in the songwriter. Let's pretend it's me. Oh look, right there, bam, easy. Explicit lyrics, is your song safe for all audiences or should you maybe monitor it? Let's, uh, let's say, no, this is a clean song. All right, is this a radio edit? Basically, was this an explicit song that has been edited to have a clean version of it? In my case, no, this is a clean song and it always has been, so we'll keep it like that. Next question is instrumental. Basically, does your music have lyrics? Is there a vocalist in it? My song, yes, this contains lyrics, as I think most of yours will be. All right, and preview clips. You can select when you want your song to start for a preview. In my song, for example, the chorus starts around 30 seconds, so I'm gonna select 30 seconds um, as the preview. That way, when people click on it on iTunes or Apple Music, they're gonna hear the chorus. They're gonna hear the meat and potatoes of the song. And lastly, we have track price. Now they do give you three options, but I always recommend sticking with the 99 cent. Some people might think, oh, we worked so hard and we spent a lot of money on this song, we gotta charge more for it. Or others may think, uh, you know, nobody's really gonna listen to it, let's try to incentivize them to listen to it. 99 cents is the standard, it's the industry standard, that's what every song sells for. So there's no need to deviate from that, just make sure you stick with it um, and just be consistent is all. All right, now next they do have some extra options. I normally don't go with a lot of these. They are an extra cost and I don't know if they're necessarily worth it. These free ones, always go for that, why not? Have your music on Instagram stories and Facebook. In terms of YouTube, I haven't found any ad revenue from YouTube, so I personally don't select that. Store Maximizer, I don't know if there's any new streaming services coming soon, so it's not worth the $8 a year to me for that. I do normally select Shazam and iPhone Siri. I do think it's super cool that maybe your friend's at a party and they hear a song, so they wanna Shazam it really quick. Or it's just fun for yourself. You throw on your song in the car and you see if it works and it pops up and it shows you all the information in your song and how to listen to it. It's only a dollar a year, and who knows, it might gain you a few new fans. The last one is Leave a Legacy. So so if you choose to delete your DistroKid account for any reason, for a $29 fee, you can have it stay on there forever. Personally, I never do. I don't see the need. If I'm gonna delete my DistroKid account, that's probably because I'm not uploading music or I'm not doing music anymore. So I don't, I don't think that one's totally worth it. Now last, there's just some disclaimer stuff to make sure that they know what you selected, to say that you did actually record this music yourself and you're not plagiarizing, to make sure that you're not stealing anybody's names or there are no other artists involved that haven't approved it. And lastly, that you've read their distribution agreement and know exactly what you're getting into. All right, after that, just hit the upload button and your album artwork and your audio will be processed. Now you do wanna make sure before you press this that all the information is correct. You can't go back and change it. Once you do this, that's it, it's out there. It's getting sent off to iTunes, Spotify, Pandora, Tidal, all of it. So make sure that all the information is correct. Done, that was easy, wasn't it? Now DistroKid is great. They tell you when everything's gonna be released, when it will be live. They even make you a pre-save link to help you get more listeners, as they say. All you do is click the preview link, and this is how easy it is for people to pre-save your music. So once the pre-save becomes available, make sure you share that with all your friends. 
um, and really help drive traffic towards your music. So from there, DistroKid handles all the banking. They'll collect all the money from your Spotify streams, your Apple Music streams, your iTunes purchases, and they'll give you a really great breakdown so you can see where everybody is listening to your music and where all your revenue is coming from. Now, I think a great goal is to try to get back that $20 annual fee in your first year. Um, I think that's super doable if you're sharing your music with your friends and family and really treating your band like a business, trying to grow your audience and grow your following. Well, there we go, guys. I told you it was super simple. Um, and if you were following along, congratulations. Your music is gonna be on Spotify in a couple weeks. That's so exciting. If you did just upload it, drop the pre-save link down below so that I can go check it out and everybody else who sees this can go listen to your song for the first time. Spotify is a great way to reach new fans and their algorithms make it really easy for your music to get to the right listeners. It's something that a lot of people don't think about. They think they just upload it and it's done. There's actually a lot more that goes on behind the scenes of Spotify than most people think. Um, you don't just upload it and it's out there. They actually have really great algorithms and playlisting that helps get your music to the right listeners. So it's really important to be active on there. Spotify is kind of another social media source in a sense. So it's really important to make sure that you put in all the accurate information, all the lyrics, and really help Spotify get your music to the right audience. Something that I tell everybody I work with is that being in a band or being a musician, as fun as it is, it is a job and it's a business. And part of a business is finding the right people and having the right audience. And so with this, hopefully you're on the right track to building your business and building your brand and building you as an artist. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope this video helped. Be sure to like and subscribe down below. And if there's any music-related videos you'd like to see, uh, just drop a comment and I'll be sure to get to it at some point. Anyways, have a great day. Be sure to keep up the work on Spotify and uh, enjoy your coffee.